Okay, I, I don't think it's actually physically possible for me to die anymore. Every time the round ends, it feels like the game's about to crash. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, I am the Spiffing Brit, and today we are playing Bro-Tato, a game that I haven't touched since, well, around about this time last year, where we absolutely destroyed the entirety of the balance of this game. Well, many, many months have passed, and the developers have now finally released it into the wilds. And it is glorious, my friends. I have sunk far too many hours into this game, and I absolutely absolutely love it. So naturally I'm strapping you down into your chairs and forcing you to watch as I demonstrate some gloriously overpowered things. And most importantly we're going to have a lot of fun. So what is a brotato? The game is very simple. You are a potato that is continuously mutating. You can hold up to six weapons which you will be using to defeat the oncoming and endless waves of hordes. Survive as long as possible. But today surviving is not just going to be enough. For this is a perfectly balanced game with no exploits. So make sure you're sat back, relaxed and comfortable as we're about to dive into this game. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be playing as the Explorer character on Difficulty 2, which I feel is the most overpowered difficulty. The Explorer is a very unique character, for you see, they don't really want to kill anyone. Their job is very simple, have as many trees as possible. And using the trees, we're hopefully going to be able to create a very, very broken character. So let's begin. Now, as you can see, effectively, I have a screwdriver that I'm going to be using to just plug away at a bunch of evil beastie boys. But the most important thing for me to do is is find trees, as trees not only give me a bunch of resources, they have a small chance of dropping crates, and crates are items. These are the lovely mutations that we can use to improve our character, so this one here increases our pickup range by 30%, very good. Now each wave that finishes, we basically go into the shop and pick up some items. This time I've decided to pick up more trees spawning, this is very very useful, as the more trees we have, the more crates we get, and there's a whole bunch of other things that we can use to make trees more and more powerful. The main issue we have is that our character is kind of an absolute useless potato. However, once we get some skills online, we might turn into a little bit of a god. So as you can see, already we're getting quite a few trees, which is very nice. Now trees are of course going to be a brilliant source of money and power, but the way we can guarantee chest dropping is with our luck statistic. Now starting out the game, our luck is pretty terrible, but after a few very simple and easy upgrades, we've managed to get that bad boy up to 15, which is, um, well, it's, it's still terrible, but that's fine. All right, and on wave four, I've finally completed my build. Six screwdrivers. It's a very pathetic weapon and basically all it does is it drops down mines. But hey, mines are lovely. The other important thing I've grabbed is the bag. This gives me money every time I pick up a crate and as you can imagine, we're going to be picking up quite a few crates and oh dear, please don't die, please don't die, please don't die. Yay, we're fine. Lovely. You see, we're not going to be very good at killing any of the ranged enemies that we run into because I'm just very slow. But hey, we've managed to get quite a few crates on this run, which is lovely. So wave four can complete whole bunch of enemies dead, and we've managed to get ourselves free crates, which means a bunch of money and a bunch of upgrades. Oh yes, extra experience gain, wonderful. Right now I have actually managed to get the upgrade I was looking for on wave 5, which is this bad boy, the pocket factory. It doesn't start out actually being overly powerful, but basically every time we kill a tree, it's going to spawn a terrible level 1 turret. As of course we're going to be producing a lot of trees, this means we have a nice way of filling out the map. And seeing as my character actually does basically no damage, uh, this is one of the few ways I might be able to survive, as the waves are going to get very challenging very quickly. Anyway, the more trees I kill, the better, and what makes the turrets even nicer is that they can even kill trees, which in turn means more turrets, which means more crates, and more crates is more money and more good, and oh my, look at this padding. Brilliant, this is going to increase our max health, that's exactly what we're going to want to nab. Right, into wave six we go, and our build hasn't really changed at all, but I have upgraded a few of our screwdrivers to do a little bit more damage. But seeing as we're going for an endless build, it doesn't really make much of a difference. Our goal is to survive for an infinite amount of time, which means we need to get our economy running. For in endless mode, enemies scale, well, endlessly as you could imagine. And that means that a dastardly Brit like myself needs to make sure that we're ahead of the game, and that means money. As well as finding ways to allow us to circumvent the economy a smidge. Now, I think our character is doing a decent job. I mean, we are getting a lot of trees spawning, which is brilliant value for me, but um, the enemies are still incredibly dangerous. Playing on a higher difficulty with these spicy meatballs with a character this week who's just designed for growing trees means that uh, we are basically just always a moment away from death. Luckily for me, I am a pro player, which means I will just simply dodge and weave. Okay, except in that one isolated incident where I just failed to dodge and weave. Uh, yes, my plan is to just simply walk around any of the enemy attack and basically place landmines everywhere. Now, please be aware that distributing this many landmines is technically against the Geneva Convention, but that doesn't matter. Right, immediately 
Unfortunately, a whole bunch more um, trees have spawned in at the start of each wave, but we are now getting very spicy, powerful enemies. These are the kind of enemies that are going to be able to nearly one-shot us, and our turrets don't really do much damage to them. Uh, so yes, we're going to have to stop pivoting our economy a little bit to actually deal damage rather than just spawn more trees, as fun as just spamming a bunch of trees are. Yes, I don't exactly want to die. Gosh, I could really do some speed as well, because navigating around these boys is a challenge. Luckily, this was a good wave. We managed to get a whole bunch of crates, and that will supercharge our economy. There we go, four crates this wave. Lovely. And because our luck stat is so high, these upgrades are actually pretty spicy. Look at them. Wonderful. All right, so heading into wave nine, I've improved my luck stat so that hopefully I will get a lot more of these chests. And at the same time, I've decided to upgrade our engineering just a smidge because otherwise I got the feeling that I was going to die, especially on wave 10 because, well, everything gets just a whole bunch more challenging. Anyway, our damage is still not brilliant and we are still effectively a walking glass cannon, but I did upgrade one of my spanners to have this giant rocket turret and I feel like the rocket turret should do a glorious amount of work for us. Anyway, back to tree farming we go as we are now up to four loot chests, which is very lovely. Right, okay, I've improved the build even more to just spawn extra landmines by effectively turning this screwdriver into a level four screwdriver. I think we're producing somewhere around about like 12 landmines for every 10 seconds, which is, you know, very jazzy indeed. This entire environment has become exceedingly hostile to life, and you know what, that's exactly how I like it. Kind of reminds me of Swindon a bit. Anyway, we've got to make sure that all of these trees are lovingly harvested and all of their lovely goodness is collected. And so even though level 10 is normally quite a scary and dangerous wave, I think it's actually gone very, very well for us. Yep, we managed to get an astounding six crates as well as two level ups, so don't mind if I grab the bean teacher. But okay, it is wave 11 uh, and I was told that a horde will spawn on this wave. Now, hordes are usually quite dangerous, however, they are also just additional enemies and more enemies killed can just mean more power for me, as enemies will, of course, drop money. After all, they can't say they didn't want to die. Why did they make themselves filled with such tasty currency? These are the questions I, of course, find myself asking. Anyway, I would say we're doing quite well we're quite early into the wave and already we've picked up five crates. This is largely because my luck stat is now getting very good, so every tree I kill, there's about like a 50% chance or so that they actually drop a crate. Well, I think that statistic does diminish the more crates I have and, well, I've got a lot of crates. I don't even know if I'm allowed to have more than six crates in one wave and I'd say if I could have more, that would be kind of broken. All right, so wave 12 is here and once again, I'm hoping that pretty much every tree I kill will just drop me a whole bunch of crates. I haven't really improved my damage by much although I have increased my speed, which I guess is now also increasing my damage thanks to a lovely bad boy here called the Power Generator. Now, because my luck is so high, we are just getting a whole bunch of lovely, unique and legendary items, which makes this run all the more viable, as those legendary items are, of course, pretty darn powerful at leveling up your build. I do find luck strats are usually just glorious. The only issue is uh, survivability. Pretty much all of them rely on you just being a glass cannon that can somehow kill everything before it even gets close to you. And currently, I would say our giant wall of turrets are doing the job. All right, once again, I'm up to six crates. Will the game let me have more than six crates? I don't think so, but you never know. Oh, it will. Okay, we're up to seven crates. Fine. Turns out the game has no limitations. My goodness, I need to increase my luck. All right, level 13. Here we go. I've increased the luck even more. So I'm expecting more crates, although that is mostly just a pipe dream. And uh, we have even more turrets and even more landmines. Although I will say our landmines don't actually explode in quite a large radius, like it's kind of this relatively decent sized circle. There are a few items that I'd love to get because if you can stack them, you can have these tiny landmines effectively cover the entire map. Then if we make that possible, we're effectively detonating tiny nuclear bombs every time an enemy moves. And as you can just see, the floor of this map is just getting ever so slightly coated with, um, yes, deadly explosives. Ah, yes, I definitely agree with what I said earlier. This feels just like Slough. Anyway, I think we are now up to seven crates almost. All right, we should finish with, oh my goodness, eight crates. That is fantastic. Right, I'm gonna grab the cute monkey, why not? And here it is, explosive size increase. God bless plastic explosive. Oh, is that two of them? I have no way of telling, but if so, that's glorious. Let me check secondary. Yes, it was. Okay, our landmines now explode for almost twice the radius. Wave 14 is upon us, and already just all of our massive turrets just start spamming out around the map, which of course destroys trees, which equals more turrets 
threatened. Look, you just stepped on a landmine. I managed to pick up another plastic explosive in the shop, so we are up to a plus 75% explosion radius, which I would say is uh, perfectly balanced indeed. How's my luck start doing? Okay, it is up to 263, which I feel is relatively decent, but the sky is the limit as far as I'm concerned. And the more we have, the more crates we get. And the more crates we get, the more stats we have. So, more is more good. And we're bam, we're already up to a lovely six crates with 11 seconds to go. Come on, trees, spawn in, spawn in, trees. Yes, there's another crate. Die, tree. Oh, and another one. Oh, and another one. Okay, this is getting very good. Oh, so dastardly. All right, wave 15 is upon us. Uh, once again, this is kind of quite a large wave in terms of just spamming out a bunch of enemies. That doesn't really make a difference because the explosion radius on our landmines are about the same size as your mother. <laughs> Sick burn, I know. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Gosh, that was just incredibly rude. My goodness. I don't know what came over me. I guess I need another cup of tea. There we go, much better, lovely, jubbly. Right, I would say uh, things are going quite well. We don't really have to deal with the enemies and our health pool is very large. So all in all, I'd say this build that we've got going is um pretty decent. Lovely stuff, that's a whole bunch more crates. Ooh, alien eyes, why not? I'll grab you, Cog, yep, you're good. Sunglasses, why not? Health regeneration, of course. Laser turret, don't mind if I do. Oh my, oh my, some of these are wonderful. Right, okay, our luck stat is now up to 365, so oh yeah, Yes, immediately we just killed like four trees and got a uh, free crates, which is very nice indeed. All right, just blow up even more trees, more trees, more power, more power, more good. Yes, and uh, we spawned landmines at quite a terrifying rate indeed. My goodness, we really don't have to deal with any enemies because they just kind of spawn on top of landmines. I mean, this is the equivalent of your doctor, say, I don't know, holding you after you've just been born and accidentally immediately dropping you onto a landmine. Uh, you don't really stand a chance in this world. Oh yes, look at all of this. So much power, so many crates, so many landmines. It's everything I wanted and more. Because how many crates did we get? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven crates. Wow, okay. I think there's a chance I could do with maybe some more experience gain stuff, because that would be a good way of increasing some stats. Right, my speed has now been increased to relatively silly levels, I'd say. I feel a good spring in my step but of course the uh, main benefit that we have going for us at the moment is a whole bunch of trees hopefully being spawned in. Although there's not as many trees at the moment. Come on, spawn in trees. I need your lovely juicy crates. Yes, there we go. Now the main problem we have going deeper into the game is, uh, is it actually becomes harder to get the drop that means you get more trees and you get less and less lower level items the deeper into the game you go. This is made even worse by our incredibly high luck statistic as our luck basically means that we're going to get all of the rare items every time we enter the shop and we don't want rare items really kind of just looking for a whole bunch of trees anyway once again a whole bunch of crates we'll just get all of these wonderful bonuses is this worth taking ah eh, why not this is also meaningless we found an item that just means more trees spawn that's actually fantastic projectiles gain one bounce um i think this includes turret projectiles so i will actually grab that the peacock all right i've decided i'm going to start saving all of my money into the future rounds because i think my characters in a decent build allows us to maximize the piggy bank which is an item that basically gives us interest on the money we save. And as I'm pretty sure my build is more than capable of defeating the bosses, I think we're in a very comfortable position. I mean, just like my natural HP is already up to like 193, which is a very comfortable spot to be in. And this is the final round before we get into our first boss fight. The boss fights are, well, they're meant to be quite dangerous. And the character that we're playing usually starts out the run with uh, very, very low damage. But we've managed to sack a whole bunch of wonderful modifiers to get our damage up to 121%. So as you can imagine, our turrets do a lot of damage, we do a lot of damage, our landmines do a lot of damage, and we basically have coated the entire map in gubbins. I mean, I'm starting to wonder if there's even any space for trees to spawn in, but you know what, I'm sure the game will find a way. Oh my goodness, there's so many chests just lying around on the ground. This is just obscene. There we go, wave complete, a whole bunch of chests. All right, here we go, ladies and gents, the final wave is upon us, and it is a wave where there is a boss that we are meant to fight. However, I will just simply... Uh, 
uh, ignore the boss and just wander around and have him probably die to my landmines. Now, ideally, he doesn't die too quickly because if he dies too quickly, um, you know, we don't get as many trees spawning in and I kind of want a lot of trees spawning in. Actually, wait, we're on endless mode. It doesn't make a difference. Lovely, he dies and we get the boss chest, which is, I think, always guaranteed to be a legendary item. So we're bam, once again, just kill everyone, get as many trees, farm those trees for success, my friends, my lovelies, my pretties. Oh, yes, wonderful profits will be had. And all in all, I'd say, uh, yes, this has gone pretty darn well. Uh, we didn't really have to deal with the boss. We've got a whole bunch of loot chests for us to level ourselves up on. And pretty much every enemy we see has just died. So I'll just go for all of these chests. What have we got? Some more luck. That's wonderful. Max HP. I don't really think I'd need this. Like, dodge is probably more useful. Medical turret? Why not? So now we're in this awkward situation where basically the game's over. However, new elites will spawn in and those elites will drop items. And the game is going to get progressively more and more difficult. Now my goal from this point on is basically to increase our statistics as much as possible because that's going to allow us to scale into the end game. Um, although, as you can see, we already do still get a whole bunch of trees, but I think the deeper and deeper in we go, we get less and less trees spawning in and also less and less crates dropping, which is indeed a bit of a shame. Of course, though, we are still just a literal god, and so whilst the enemies that we're killing have now thousands and thousands of HP, that doesn't really matter as I have thousands and thousands of landmines. Okay, I was a little bit concerned that the crates spawning in would drop off now that we're into the overtime, but no, apparently um, they're just going to stay exactly where they're at. If anything, we've now got more crates than ever before. Fuck, I just spilled a drink on my desk. Oh, balls. Oh, no, there's tea in my keyboard. Oh, bollocks. Oh, no. Oh, there's been a murder. Right, I'm back in a moment. Oh, no, my keyboard's gonna be all horribly sticky. I just got so excited. That's the problem. Oh, screw it. I want to go through these crates. How many do we have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Do I even need to move? I could just AFK and then the game would probably sort itself out. I'm not sure. Ah, oh, this is the exact kind of item I'm looking for. It's an item that basically gives us more HP, more health regeneration and lifesteal at the end of every round. Very, very jazzy. Sad Tomato would give us plus eight health regeneration. Ah, eh, why not? Could go wrong. More armor. Lovely. Armor's good. Oh no, I think there's liquid in one of my keys. Okay, this is going to make the whole movement shenanigans a little bit more of a challenge as my character is continuously pulling itself to the left, uh, but that's fine. Anyway, there was a boss there, or an elite that we have just uh, instantly evaporated, which is very nice. And a whole bunch of chests are lying down on the ground for me. Come on, game, behave! I'm literally not in control of my character. <laughs> this is a nightmare. Oh, well, you know what? That's fine. I'm just going to let the keyboard control the character here. Um... <laughs> God, this is by far one of the most overpowered runs I've ever had, and my character is spending it is kind of jittering around in an awkward fashion. But that's fine, it's okay, everything's going to be good. I mean, we are getting a whole bunch of chests dropped, which is very good, which is going to be very nice for the long-term uh, run here. I have no idea how many chests exactly we do have, but it feels like a good amount. Oh god, I'm going to have to get myself a new keyboard, aren't I? Right, so into the next wave we go. I've once again increased my luck a bit, and and also just generally my um, damage output, which is wonderful. Although, though we are in an awkward situation where it is harder for me to get newer turrets, especially if we start getting less and less trees, we're going to have to more heavily rely on landmines. Not that that's much of a problem in my opinion, considering that landmines now um, are effectively all over the floor and do an obscene amount of damage. God, my keyboard is just ruined. Absolutely ruined. No. Oh, God. I can't believe my keyboard has been defeated by a cup of tea. Oh, dear. I suppose if anything was going to bring my rampage to an end, it was going to be that. But there we go. We still got an obscene amount of crates, and that's good because that just scales everything up nicely. Okay, basically, I have an item that means when I kill an enemy, my luck stat is then immediately dealt as damage to an enemy, which, as you can imagine, is pretty darn good. Basically means every time an enemy dies, another enemy is dealt one thousand damage, which at this level is pretty much immediately enough to kill another enemy. The resulting chaos is that uh, effectively every single enemy immediately dies upon the death of another enemy. And of course this stacks with our giant endless landmines, as well as all of just, well, everything else I have going on. At this point, uh, we have a nice, we have a nice build. Also, we're almost at 600% experience gain, which as you can imagine is relatively decent. 
Ah uh, yes, we did get less crates this run. I do believe we are going to start hitting the end of our fruit train. Right, wave 25 we're at. I think at wave 30 we are going to face off against um, some actual enemy elites. Maybe some bosses. But for the moment, uh, no enemies can actually live. And I'm just going to leave my character AFK. And we'll see how many crates we get at the end. All right, I'm just going to AFK a few waves and uh, see how far we get. Because um, the game has now become unplayable thanks to my uh, ongoing movement situation. I mean, the camera is not even bothering to follow my character around anymore. Oh dear. I mean, I suppose I am very, very fast. What's the point of even trying to pin a camera to me? Look at the movement. Also, uh, yes, the landmines now do cover up the entirety of the screen, which is uh, very good. And I think the quantity of trees that are spawning in hasn't depleted. It's merely the luck stat is dropping off against them. So I am going to try and find more and more ingenious ways of gaining luck. Although we are still already getting a lot of crates every round, which is very good. Oh my goodness, we're getting a whole bunch of lucky items as well that's fantastic more luck is more good my armor is also up to uh 63 which means we take 81 percent less damage we have an increase of 700 percent damage we regain one hp every 0.15 seconds we also have a 48 percent chance to heal every time we attack our speed is at 247 percent and our luck stat is at 1000 percent this is absurdly high and definitely completely broken uh although we are going to face an elite this wave so um yes hopefully this will be quite exciting and dangerous and uh, maybe we might take any damage. Nope, okay, all of the elites just died immediately. Well, that's to be expected. I mean, they effectively spawn into the world, landmine hits them, and they're immediately blown up. I don't know what the resting explosion damage of a landmine is, but I imagine it's uh, probably pretty decent. But hey, we are getting a whole bunch of crates from our lovely trees, which is, which is very, very good. And there we go, fantastic. Wave 32 complete. We've got about 10 crates there, wonderful. Oh, ooh, coffee, right? We don't want that. We'll recycle that. Hedgehog, lovely. Schmoop, um, I don't know what a schmoop is, but why not? Increased HP regeneration is always lovely. Okay, my goodness, right, into wave 35 we go. Uh, we're at level 60, and I think we might be outpacing the game. I'm not really sure how much additional health the enemies are getting each wave we go in, but I'm gaining a resting plus 24% damage per turn, simply from this vigilante ring here. This is making me quite the powerful being indeed, and I mean, there's just a bajillion trees for me to collect as well and oh my goodness is that turning me into an absolute powerhouse I mean the screen is basically a nightmare at this point if there's a single explosion wabam more running around we go. Gosh, I'm just an absolute machine. I think I saw a couple of attacks there doing, yep, 11,000 damage. I'm not sure what tower I have is doing 11,000 damage, but I uh, I think it's the kind that's going to make sure nobody survives. Oh my goodness, we are just getting so many crates. This is wonderful. I think some additional luck would be great. Otherwise, these waves are just kind of becoming even more and more walks in the park, which is very nice indeed. All right, wave 37, here we go. Once again, just a whole bunch more trees and damage added to the build. I mean, our HP is up to 637, and I don't think I've taken damage from an enemy in the last 15 rounds. So, yeah, things are looking pretty decent. Even the high health elites that spawn in with maybe 10,000 life can go down before they can even get close to me. So, yeah, I'd say we're in a pretty decent spot. Okay, I added some more luck, and, well, I got even more crates, so I'd say that's a nice correlation. My HP regeneration is now up to 106. Now, my plan is to actually get rid of one of my weapons here. I'm going to get rid of my wrench and replace it with this chain gun. Now, the chain gun scales to our engineering damage, which means it's going to do 3,800 damage, and it shoots every 0.05 seconds. It will always critical hit, and when it hits an enemy, it will bounce twice and pierce three times, and life steal for 92% of the time. This is basically a perfect weapon, but I would like to see how it does, so yes, I've loaded in, and well, um, it appears to just immediately one-hit everything, which is is, um, quite nice indeed. We don't really have to worry about enemies ever again, I suppose. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I think I need even more luck. Maybe that's a good idea. More luck, more good. I think we also get more money this way because when we kill an enemy with a critical attack, we get gold, we get money. Though it doesn't particularly matter at this point because we have more money than we could ever use and most of my money is just spent re-rolling the shop so I can find better things. Wave 40. So yes, we've got some bosses here. Uh, now, of course, these bosses could do a lot of damage. Sadly, they all just died then. So, um, yeah, we don't really have to worry about that anymore. Instead, I just get to enjoy all of the crates they dropped. Wonderful, wonderful stuff. Just zoom around, get more trees. 38 trees. Right, this is going to be a big wave. We actually have an elite spawn on it. So, um, let's see where they are. Um, oh, there they are on the bottom.
awesome. All three elites, in fact, and um, they all died instantly. Well, um, that's good for them. Good for them. I mean, I can sit stationary and the game is basically over. <laughs> My god. I don't even know if enemies will do much damage to me. I think I have like a 60% dodge chance, coupled on top of an 87% damage nullification, instantaneous life steal whenever I hit an enemy. Yeah, I think I've just become death, the destroyer of worlds. What a lovely space to be in. I mean, I can move at basically the speed of light around the map, which is lovely. Okay, I, I don't think it's actually physically possible for me to die anymore. Um, I'm gonna go to wave 50. I think if I can survive wave 50, I've hit an infinite loop. Because my character is nearing almost 1,000 health, and uh, we're pretty much unstoppable at this point. We regenerate so much HP per turn, we do so much damage instantaneously, we just basically don't see enemies. They appear for one singular frame, and then they're blasted out of existence. And especially when we keep getting these baby elephants the game is over. These baby elephants have so far done an astounding 16 million damage. As you can imagine, that's pretty darn good. Well, we almost have it. I am almost at 1,000 HP, which is an astounding point to be at, and I think we're all almost there. Just a little bit more money. There we go. 1,003 HP. My goodness, we are completely unkillable. I can just stand inside of the enemies, and there is no chance that they're going to be able to actually have a tick of damage onto me, and every time the round ends, it feels like the game's about to crash. I'd say that's a sign that you're doing something right, especially when you can get a common landmine here that just does 587 damage. My goodness. What an absurd quantity. Alright, this is the penultimate round ladies and gentlemen. Wave 49. It has been a um, standard typical wave. I am certainly hitting the drop off point of loot boxes. We only get around about 2 to 3 per wave now as opposed to the heady 20 or so we were getting in our heyday. But that's okay. I understand that all good things must eventually come to an end. And here we are, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not even going to buy anything. We're going to go into wave 50, the ultimate final wave. We do so with a damage modifier of 1,830%, a crit chance of 410%, far more armor and dodge than we'll ever realistically need, and the ability to move faster than the speed of light. We can place down a landmine, and each landmine is going to do 595 damage. And we also have a chain gun. The chain gun fires three shots, each doing 7,392 damage, every 0.05 seconds. These shots then pierce three enemies, bounce twice, and basically always do a bajillion damage. We are completely and utterly unstoppable. And now it is time for us to say goodbye to our character. As you can see, we get to face a whole bunch of bosses, but um, the bosses can't really kill me. I can just kind of stay stationary and, and try to dip beneath 500 HP, but that's kind of like half my life total. So uh, yes, there we go. Those are the bosses and elites defeated. We are in uh, the stratosphere, I would say, in terms of ability. If not even the most overpowered enemies in the game can keep up with us, then, well, no one can. I am an unstoppable, unkillable speed demon. And if you happen to be in the same continent as one of my landmines, you will be getting exploded. And there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. We've done wave 50. We are unstoppable. We are unkillable. And the game has been completed. We cannot be stopped by any normal means of combat. Our lovely explorer character has become the god of this universe. Of course, if you enjoyed what you saw in today's video, then make sure to go into the comment section and press F to pay respects for my glorious keyboard, which is now, um, yeah, it's a bit dead. I'm gonna need a new one before the next video. <laughs> anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please do give it a like, and why not consider subscribing? Of course, as always, a massive thank you to the majestic sausages that are our YouTube members and patrons who make these videos all the more possible. And hey, if you're sat there wondering what to watch next, well, look no further than this video on screen now, chosen by myself to be perfect for you. Anyway, I'll see each and every one of you in the next one. Have a lovely day, and goodbye for now.